Hi, my name is Miss O'Neill and I'm going to be your art teacher today. Today we're going to do some collages. So you are going to need some paper, some scissors, and some glue. Now let's talk about the paper a little bit. The paper we're going to use today is pretty much any type of paper you have at home. You can use old magazines, um, old wrapping paper, tissue paper, you can use an old gift bag. I'm going to use some of this paper that I use with my students. That These are our table protectors that we use when we are painting so we don't get stuff on the desks. But it's kind of cool at the end of the year, all the, um, the little mistakes or artwork is, is uh, left on the paper. So it kind of makes a cool looking paper. So um, what I want you to do before you start cutting up paper is I want you to get permission from your family that it's okay to cut up these magazines and other, other paper in your house. If you cannot find any paper, you can always make your own paper. So you can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, or paint to design paper. So I created some designs right here um, with just regular loose leaf paper. You can use notebook paper. And um, I knew that I wanted some green, so I just took a bunch of green markers and then I just kind of just had fun with making marks on the page. Another great thing about notebook paper is that you can create lines and stripes. Right here, I just had fun just making swirls and using all different colors and just filling up the page. So you don't have to worry about staying in the lines. You're just coloring a design. Um, here's another example. This is kind of like a plaid design because you already have lines going this way, so all you have to do is add lines going the opposite direction. And then up here, I know I want some more green, like the other piece, so I just put some green crayon marks over here. So what is a collage? A collage is an artistic composition made of various materials, such as paper, cloth, or wood, and it's glued to a surface. So let's make our collage. So I'm going to show you how to make a collage that looks like this one right here. We're going to do a flower vase. But if you do not want to do a flower vase, that is okay. You can create your own design. You can see some student artwork work here. Um, one student did a fish, and so they just thought of the, the shapes that would make up a fish. So you can see right here I made a fish and I did an oval for the body and triangles for the fins and then you can add like little plants. So this was actually from my wrapping paper. I just cut out the little green part because I thought it would look good as a plant at the bottom of the sea. Another thing you can do if you're creating your own design you might want to sketch it out on your paper first, like one of these students did. He was creating an imaginary animal. So he drew the animal first so he would have a better idea of what types of shapes he would need. So the first thing we're going to do today is create a background. And you can do this with um, markers, crayons, colored pencils, anything that you have. I'm using paint today because um, I think it's going to be a little, it's going to be faster. So, when you are using paint, some of you have watercolors at home, remember to add water. Since we're having a vase, I'm going to make the bottom half of my paper look like a table. And all I have to do is draw this line from one side to the other. And then I can paint any kind of design that I want. I could make it solid if I wanted to. I could do polka dots. You can have a lot of fun with your designs. Be very creative. It does not have to look like mine. When you are doing your design, think about um, 
what you'd like to communicate with your artwork. Remember that art is a form of communication. It's communicating without words. And in visual arts, you're communicating with images and colors and shapes and lines. So I'm thinking this should be a happy picture. And I know that sometimes we have special events come up and we might want to get somebody in our family a present. Maybe we, we would like to get them flowers. So this way we can make them flowers out of stuff that we have around the house. So I'm just making, oops, I'm putting all kinds of colors in here. Now, since I want it to dry a little fast right now, you don't have to do this at home, but I'm going to put a paper towel on it, and that kind of creates a neat texture sometimes when you press it on the paint. I'm going to take, um, I've already cut out a lot of pieces. Um, the first thing we're going to cut out, let's see, is our vase. So vases can be lots of different shapes. We can see right here, there's one vase is just a rectangle. The next vase is made with a circle and a triangle. And then we have an oval and a rectangle, two triangles, and then the last vase has all the shapes. You can really have fun with it. I brought some vases to show you. So you can see this kind of looks like a triangle shape because it's bigger at the top and then it goes smaller at the bottom. It's like they cut off the bottom there. This is a vase that you, it's more of a traditional shape. It has curved lines and a big opening so that you can put lots of flowers in it. And then this vase was actually made by my brother and he made it out of clay, so he got to do whatever he wanted. You can see at the top of this vase, it's rectangular. But when you look at the side, it has all these wavy lines to it. So you can have wavy lines on your vase. It does not have to look like a geometric shape, like one of those shapes over there. So I've cut out some, um, already cut out some shapes, and I'm going to decide which one to put in my picture. So I could put that one there, or I could put this one there. This one's a little too tall because I want to make sure I have a lot of room for my flowers. So what I can do, I can just change it. If something is not working, I can just cut it so that it does work. So by cutting that off, it's going to fit better on my table and I'm going to have a lot of room up here for my flowers. So I think that's ready to be glued on. And what I'm going to do, I'm using a glue stick today. This is the kind that you can uh, put on purple, but then it dries clear. And that's going to show you how much glue I'm putting on. I don't have to be very precise with my glue. I'm just going to put that right there. It's okay that there's extra. And I have already cut out some green stems. So I use magazine paper. When you're looking through magazines, you're not really looking at the images so much, but you're looking at the colors and the backgrounds. Like this is a picture of an ad for something, but it has this beautiful blue color. And so I found a picture that had a lot of green, and I said that would be perfect for my green stems. So I'm going to just put a bunch of glue right here. I'm not even worrying too much about where I'm putting it so that I can put my stems wherever I want. If you find out your stems are too long, all you have to do is cut them. Now these are, most of these are going to be covered up, but I like to put them in there anyway. I'm going to have to cut some of these. And if something is not working, you can move it before it dries. Oops. Let me put that over there. I'm going to need a little more glue. All right, now that we have our vase and we have some stems in it, we can add some flowers. So let's talk about flowers. 
you know it's spring right now so there's flowers everywhere and there's so many different types of flowers around um, these are just a few shapes that we can use to create flower petals see the first one is a heart and actually if you look really closely at flowers a lot of them do have somewhat of a heart-shaped petal and then we have an oval this is like a teardrop shape and I even use a hexagon. Does anybody know how many sides a hexagon has? That's right, six sides. So that is a stretched out hexagon. And then the yellow one is made with triangles. Now a triangle could be used either way. You could have it with the point coming out or the point going in like this one. And then this last flower was made using all the shapes. So you can create your own flower that no one has ever seen before. And that's kind of fun. So the next thing I'm going to do, I have a bunch of different shapes already cut out. I'm going to add them to my vase up here. And I can put them really anywhere out here because if you've ever seen a bouquet of flowers, it gets really big at the top. So it doesn't matter if my stem goes over there. I'm just going to, I'm going to start putting them over here. It's kind of like a puzzle but you don't have to worry about fitting the pieces together. So you're just gonna put your petals, you're gonna arrange them the way you like them. Making a flower shape, and some of our flowers are gonna overlap, you can see that here. That's okay, if something doesn't look right, you can just cover it up with something else. Or if you need to move it around, you can move it before it dries. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little round piece right in the middle. All right, so the next, I'm just going to put a bunch of glue right here so I can add my flowers. This is kind of a neat piece of paper I found that was a part of a lady's dress. It's her skirt. And so it had all those pretty pleats in it, kind of reminded me of a flower. So I just cut it out like a flower shape. I'm going to add it right there. Let's see. Here's some ovals. This is another dress, a flower made out of a dress. You have a lot of magazines that have advertising. People have pretty outfits on. Let's see. Maybe I need another flower over there. Let's make one. Let's mix our, our petals up. So we're going to have some really long petals. Whoops. Spread out. And then I can pick any other petal to add to this. Okay, so that's looking kind of good. Maybe I need to add something else. Let's see what else I have. I have some purple petals. Add some more glue. And you can also add on, you can keep adding. You can just add as much as you want. And it's okay, mine's going off the page. That's not a big deal. If you don't want it to, you can just cut it off. Something else you'll see, it depends on what types of magazines you have, but some that have animals and, and plants, you can just actually cut out an animal or an insect. I have this butterfly that I found in a magazine, so I'm just going to add the butterfly out here. Maybe I'll put one over here too. 
All right, so once, let's see, I think we need something over here. So I'm gonna add another flower up here. Now this one I used rectangles. So you really think, are there any flowers that have rectangle petals? Well, maybe not, but this is my work of art so I can make the look how I would like them to look. Let's see. I wish y'all I, I were here so you could give me some advice and tell me what, what I should add to this picture to make it look good. Because I know that y'all know. Y'all have good ideas. All right. Hmm. I think I need some green. Like I was saying, I created this green paper so that I could make leaves. So if you do create paper like this, it doesn't really matter where you cut um, into the paper. I'm just going to cut a leaf shape, maybe a couple of leaf shapes. And I kind of did this zigzag pattern because leaves kind of have lines that go out. So I'm going to cut it so that the leaf has those lines in it. And then once I have my leaves, I can decide where I want to put them. So check out where it looks best and then decide where to put it. Stick one right here, maybe one over here. All right. Now, you might want to add very tiny details. And you're thinking, Miss O'Neill, I cannot cut a very tiny, tiny shape out. That is fine. You don't have to cut out a shape, you can use markers to add tiny details like that. So say I wanted to add some lines into my stems, I could just draw it right on there. If I wanted to add lines to my leaves, I could draw that on there as well. Okay. And you can see on, my, on this one, I left it blank behind or above the table. On these two, I painted the background. So if you want to add a little something extra to this, you can decorate it with your markers or your crayons and add designs. You might add a few swirls. And maybe Don't forget to sign it. And then when you are finished, I really, really want you to share your artwork with me. And you can do that by emailing me at um, loneil at mcpss.com. That's L-O-N-E-I-L-L. -L. And I want you to think about when you're taking your pictures of your art, you can find a really bright place to take your picture. You can either put it flat and hold your camera up like this. If you notice you're getting a shadow, you might want to kind of prop it up like this to take a picture of it. But I would really love, love to see it. I, um, I enjoyed having art class with you today, and I hope everybody stays safe. Thanks.